Yeah, hi everyone. Jason here, Robot Lawnmowers Australia. Um, today we're going to have a look around the property, our test property, uh, where we've had the Mamotion Luba running for approximately a month now. Uh, so I'll run you through just uh, how we've actually set it up here um, and sort of uh, some of the things that, that have happened along the way uh, and just give you a bit of an overlay, uh, an overview of uh, how the Lubas actually performs uh, over a full month of mowing a property now. Uh, the space we're on here at the moment, this space here is actually about 3,000 square metres. Um, so the robot is capable of doing 5,000 square metres. This is a, 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 an all-wheel drive 5,000 metre model. Um, but we've got it sitting here on the 3,000 square metre here because we do a like test for, for all of our robot mowers, but particularly our wireless mow, mow, robot mowers all in the same area so we can do a uh, complete like-for-like -like comparison. So this area, um, as you can see, it's all absolutely perfectly mowed. Um, the robot itself actually did stop working four days ago, so we've had it mowing this area every single day for a month. Uh, but four days ago, um, the robot did have an error, um, and it's uh, been sitting on the charger for about four days and not mowed at all. So at the moment, this is four days after the last time it mowed. Uh, being that it's winter, it doesn't. the grass is not really growing here pretty much at all at the moment. Um, it really hasn't. Uh, is this sort of you'd, you'd expect this to be how it would look after after day one or day two in summer. Um, so the very first thing I noticed when I uh, when I when I pulled up here actually just now was actually these leaves here on the ground. Um, so what the Luba has been doing uh, really quite well is maintaining the leaves uh, away from the property now. Now these robot mowers are certainly not designed to mulch or anything like that. Um, but all these leaves that are around this tree here at the moment, the ones that are on the grass. Um, I did notice uh, on the kind of camera we've got set up here that uh, that four days ago when the Luba was actually still running, um, that there were no leaves uh, on the grass. It was only, only leaves uh, in the uh, in the dirt area, the exclusion zone around the actual tree itself. So, so the Luba has been uh, yeah mulching up the leaves really quite well. Mm. So, the one thing with the Luba uh, that seems to supersede just about every other uh, robot that's out there at the moment is its four-wheel drive ability. Um, its ability to run through areas. Uh, there's, a, there's a little channel just here that you can't really see because it's, uh, it's mowed so perfectly well. Um, just over here, there's actually quite a large channel. And I'll show you a picture of my foot in this grass uh, up on the screen there, but this, uh, just all the way through here, there's actually a channel there that's about probably, probably nearly four or five inches deep, so nearly 100 mil deep. Um, and then over this other side over here, uh, there's a hole over here, which is quite significant as well that the uh, that we've managed to, to, to allow the Luba to actually just run through um, so there's another hole just there uh, and there's another picture there of uh, uh, someone's foot in that hole um, so all these sorts of things with the Luba you don't really need to worry about too much uh, the robot did not get stuck in any of these holes uh, over the last month um, in fact the robots actually had two events uh, where it actually stopped by itself full stop um, so the first one, uh, which I'll show you on the screen here just now, was, uh, it was just literally a, uh, a branch coming off or, or a leaf of uh, one of the succulents coming out the side of the, the uh, garden that actually pushed, pushed the stop, bu stop button as Luba went by. Um, so you can't really, uh, blame, can't really blame Luba for that. Um, and the second instance, which I don't have a photo of, um, it was just a stick that got caught underneath the robot uh, and jammed at the blade, the cutting system. So. Um, as far as you know, coverage via trees and everything else, so this, this little spot here is pretty much the worst uh, where we're sitting under this uh, uh, tree here. Um, so the mower has been mowing all through here, no problems whatsoever. Um, you can see in this whole area we've got, you know, we've got palm trees on the right hand side um, and then a canopy on the left hand side, more trees, more trees. So there's a significant amount of tree cover in this area uh, and the robot hasn't had any issues whatsoever um, mowing all this space, which is really fantastic for, a, uh, for an RTK based robot to be able to do. All the way down the side here, everything was fine. There was one location further down here that I'll get to in a second, uh, where I did notice the robot had, I think had three, had three partial errors where, it just, where the robot just temporarily stopped for a few seconds and then continued on. Uh, and they all happened in the same spot. So I should be able to tell you exactly where that is. And I believe it was right here actually. So it'll be in this spot just here. So basically, so, 
I'm not, in, I'm not entirely sure exactly where it was, but it was somewhere in this space just here. Um, and this space here again has trees, palms on all sides. Uh, then it's got this uh, large pine tree here as well. Um, so still view all the sky though, like the, the sky's still up there, there's no doubt about it. So it wasn't under a complete canopy or anything like that. But in this particular location, uh, I said I, I was either two or three occasions where the robot just temporarily paused while it was trying to get its position and then, then it continued on. So it really has done a fantastic job. Uh, this area has 30 of these exclusion zones um, going around all these trees, but you really can see that this thing has done an absolutely fantastic job. <laughs> so the one really good thing uh, that I found with the Luba uh, while remote viewing it over all this time, over the last month, um, is that it can tell you exactly how many satellites it's actually connected to. Uh, so it gives you it gives you an understanding of exactly how the robot's working and how it's receiving a signal at all times. So that really, really helps you know, understand where the robot's ha having issues and not having issues. Uh, and like I said, we found that the robot really just didn't have any issues. So that was absolutely fantastic. Because we actually did, we split this, this, uh, this entire zone up into two areas. Um, and the reason for that is because we're actually running this on a solar system here at the moment. And uh, we didn't we didn't really have enough battery charge in our solar system to uh to mow the entire lawn every day so we actually split it in half so it actually did it was actually in two separate halves so that's actually the track so the three tracks just going through here this is where it splits between zone one so zone one's on this side and zone two is on this side now one of the other reasons why we sort of did this was because of the uh, the turning action of the robot and how it actually turns around with a skid steer. We wanted to sort of see over time to see, uh, particularly while the grass is not growing, um, yeah, how much damage it actually caused to the grass. And I can tell you it's essentially none in this particular grass. So this is a cooch grass of some description. Um, and uh, there actually is no real damage to this grass whatsoever now. This robot is mowing um, vertically one day and horizontally the other, so on east, west and north, south. Um, so obviously you can see the lines in the grass, it was actually it mowed that way last, but the day before that it would have mowed this way. So in this spot through here, the robot's been coming down, turning around, going back, turning around, going back, turning around, going back, and then when it's on this side, it's coming across, turning around, go back, turning around, go back. So this space all through here, there's been a significant amount of turning done by the robot over the last month. Um, and there really is, next to no damage to the grass at all here, which is really fantastic to see. So the uh, the way they've actually set the firmware up now with the robot not just doing a tank turn, it actually sort of goes forward, back, forward, back, forward, back. Um, it really has done a really good job of minimizing, or almost eradicating the, uh, the damage to the grass. So we have found, uh, yeah, if your grass is not very strong and the, and the soil's damp, that you know that sort of uh, that sort of turning action will damage the grass. You know, it really has to, unfortunately, you know, the way it goes. But as long as your grass is reasonably healthy, uh, then you should have no troubles at all um, with the uh, with the robot not causing any damage to the grass when it's uh, when it's turning around and mowing. So. so the uh, there is the 1,000 and 3,000 square meter models that will be coming uh, in the future. Uh, they won't be coming to Australia in the first in the first uh, lot, but they will be coming further on down the track. Um, they've actually got the Omni front wheel on them, um, so that they do less damage again to the uh, to the uh, to the grass when they're mowing. Apologise for the sun and the glare there. I'll just get up through here and show you Luba. Okay. So as you can see, he's uh, incredibly dirty. He hasn't been cleaned once uh, while he's been here. Um, he's just on charge. He's actually scheduled to go out in about uh, about half an hour before he actually heads back out again. So he's been working, like I said, consistently for one month. Hasn't been touched, um, hasn't been cleaned, anything else. Like, so he definitely, definitely gets a lot of dirt thrown up over him. Um, and I'm guessing that's from the front wheels uh, you know, spinning when it turns around and things like that. So. There's definitely a, uh, they definitely need a bit of a wash, wash occasionally, so maybe once a week a, a quick hose down wouldn't be a bad thing for them. We've got the RTK station just on its own temporary pole here, and we've got it sitting here in a fairly open space, so the nearest trees are those palm trees there, uh, this tree here, but if we sort of go back a bit further here, you should see that they, they are reasonably 
reasonable way away. They're about probably about six to eight meters away from the from the RTK station. So we don't exactly have the absolute optimum uh, uh, you know, view of the sky here. Um, it's certainly not bad, um, but it's not as good as what you'd really like it to be. Uh, ideally, in this scenario, we'd actually put the, uh, the antenna further up on a pole to get it above the uh, to get it above the tree lines. Um, the one thing worth noting um, is this track coming through here. It does look probably probably looks a lot worse on the camera than it does actually in, in real life. The actual grass here is not really that damaged. You see, that's the grass there. It looks it looks a lot more damaged than it really is. Um, but that's the track that the robot's taking to its zone every single day. So this is actually this is mounted outside of the zone at the moment, and it leaves and goes through there every single day, and then does its mow and comes back. So it also does it has one and a half charges per day as well. So it actually travels three times a day through this track, uh, out and back. So that's six six times it goes on this actual track every single day for the last month. So it is something worth noting that if you do have you know, a tracked area where the robot's going to leave and, and, and go to a to an area, you know, basically every day sort of thing, that it's going to track on exactly the same spot all the time. Um, and they really can't change that because this is designed to be able to go through you know, tight, narrow spaces um, to be able to get to its area. So that's just one thing worth noting that it does, definitely has left a track there over the last month. Um, now at the front of the robot where it turns around, um, it still leaves a donut, so if you look at other other uh, reviews and that online, you'll see that they uh, that they'll they come back into the base station and then they turn and they reverse in, where they turn in the same spot every day, and uh, they do damage the grass. You know, there's no doubt that, that that grass is damaged, but again, after a full month of turning uh, you know, six times a day in that spot, um, I'm actually quite impressed that it hasn't uh, cut a complete circle in the ground there, so it's really not too bad at all. Uh, so it's definitely better than it used to be. They do provide a mat now that you can actually put down on the grass uh, in front there uh, if you need it to be able to turn on something. Um, I'm not sure really what the, the full point of that really is because obviously you know, if you put a mat down there the grass is going to die under that mat anyway. So I mentioned earlier that the, uh, that the that Luba was actually on here uh, with a fault. Um, so I've actually just corrected that uh, just, just now, just earlier. Um, the fault on him this time was actually just the dirty contacts on the back. So, uh, which is something that you will have to manage with Luba. Uh, if I just drag him forward a bit. <laughs> it's these contacts here on the back. So that's an infrared screen just there that actually reads an infrared signal over onto this screen over here. So there's actually a little signal that goes between the robot. That's how he docks. So that needs to be kept clean. You need to keep this clean. These are the actual charge contacts. They need to be kept clean. And on the base station, these are the charge contacts here that push in. They need to be kept clean on the face. And also this screen here needs to be kept clean as well. So keep all those clean and you have no issues. So what actually happened was that Luba came back to dock and he just didn't make contact. He probably had two or three tries at trying to, to actually dock properly and then just, just failed over time. Okay, you get the green green flashing light means he's charging okay the other thing uh, which I won't flip him up but the the cutters on this thing here um, perfectly clean so he's been going for a month I will, I will lift him up um, he's been going for a month like we said uh, the cutters are all perfectly fine um, he's not chocked up with any grass at all but then he's not really cutting much grass here at all um, so they're still spinning quite fine there is a couple there that are a little bit you know, they're not they're not certainly not stuck that's for sure they're just a little bit, a little, little bit of grass sort of stuck around them. So being that he's not cutting much grass, there's not much gum coming off the grass. So therefore he's really, it really is perfectly fine here. When it's cutting a lot more grass uh, in summer, um, we might start seeing more grass build up underneath the robot and you might start seeing those blades uh, getting stuck. So, all right, just another little ad. Thanks guys. Um, so that's sort of Luba um, in his first test. So he's really, really has done a significantly great job um, of, uh, of keeping this area perfectly mowed. Um, if you've got any questions, specific questions about Luba, uh, please let us know. Um, we, can, uh, we can get any answers you've got uh, that you need. Any, any questions you've got, we can get, get answered for you. Um, but other than that, I think you can sort of see that you know, Luba does a significantly great job. Um, Time-wise, to mow this area, he takes, it's 500, yeah, it's five, 500 minutes he takes to mow the entire area. Um, so what, let's say, uh, what's that, about eight, eight and a quarter hours, eight, eight hours, 20 minutes or something like that, to mow 3,000 square meters. Um, so he really does a good job. 
Um, like I said, we've got him split in half to do this half each day out here at the moment. Um, and he's basically, he leaves at 8.30 in the morning, comes back and charges twice, even though he only, the second charge, he doesn't really need to, need, need to be fully charged. Um, and he's back on his charger and docked up by, you know, up to around about one o'clock, I think it is, to, he's, he's finished for the day and doesn't come out until the next day. So getting these guys to mow 5,000 square meters is going to be quite easy. There's no doubt about that. Um, they are software limited uh, via the size of the area you can actually do. So even though the robot itself is probably capable of doing much more than 5,000 square meters, um, they're software limited so that you can only run, run them on 5,000 square meters. You might get a little bit more than 5,000, but only just. So I think that's about it guys. Um, look, as always, uh, if you've got any questions, you can email us at sales at robotlawnmowers.com.au. Uh, you can check out other information on many other robots as well as Luba uh, on our website at www.robotlawnmowers.com.au. Uh, and you can check us out on Facebook. Just look for Robot Lawnmowers Australia for any short videos and things that we might post there. So that's it for the Luba guys. Thanks for watching.